Good evening and welcome back to the Spirit of Motorsport TV, powered by Podium Vodka. Well, have we got a few treats for you this evening. Thanks for joining us once again. Remember, it is an interactive show, so feel free to join in the live comments. If you have any questions for any of the guests that we have joining us this evening, feel free to fire them our way and we'll do our very best to answer every single one of them. So this evening, we have the great Roy Moore joining us once again. And also, we do have some fantastic guests from around the world now we've got this competition that ends this evening at midnight and we've had some amazing entries from stills to videos so we have some of the guys that have entered some fantastic fantastic content into the competition that are joining us this evening and chat and share some stories about the content that they have entered and also we have a little bit of a fan and it's a fan of the show and a fan of obviously the great roy moore and he's across the pond in the sunny United States of America. So he's going to be joining us in just a few minutes time as well. So I'm going to ask the fantastic and the wonderful Roy Moore to join us in the studio. Good evening, Roy. Good evening, everybody. As we always say down at Ramsey, whether you'll be uh, looking at it live or by other methods, uh, certainly we're delighted to be asked again. And uh, yeah, Friday. An unusual day but uh, the weather hasn't improved much again if it had been senior race day today which would have probably if when you think about the uh, the kind of things well i don't think there's been too many tts in july but certainly the southern hundred would have suffered last week and if anything was on at this particular time usually try and get car rallies and stuff in at this time of the year but that's all gone by the the wayside as well the manx poker stars rally and of course the manx trophy rally which was a big event later on in the year so the island of motorsport is depleted this year but uh, it might have been depleted even if it, it was going ahead by the the weather we've had which is a bit disappointing that infamous microclimate of the sunny isle of man hey yeah, they say the a kind of a quick summary of uh, weather on the Isle of Man. You miss the best, but you miss the worst. And uh, certainly looking down at London on the charts at this precise moment in time, they're kind of sweltering and overcrowding mm. the beaches and where we've had a full day of rain today. So disappointment. Mm. So, Roy, we've had some uh, amazing entries for the competition that ends at midnight tonight. Um, and it's been fantastic to hear some of the stories that accompany the pictures and the videos. Now, your uh, page on Facebook with the great Barry Wood, uh, the Mountain Memories page, there's some bloody fantastic stories and shots on there as well. So if you don't mind, I'd love us to just hop on there this evening, just for a short while, just to shine a light on a few of the amazing content that you've got on there. Yeah, certainly. This was uh, this was one that came. Andy Watts, uh, I think it's the beauty of this site that we've got that uh, names like that that you, you wouldn't think about until his name appears. And then you mm. think, God, he did well in the TT. And this was at the, uh, the Northwest, I think it says at the top. Mm -hmm. And uh, he finished runner up. And then you look at the the bike. I think I think that was one of uh, the Eldrick machineries, or it was done through some kind of development. And it was a rocket ship, and it mm. took on uh, the works work stuff at the time. And that's just a Kraken photograph because I don't know whether he is on our site, but certainly people will inform him. And it's it's a casual photograph, uh, probably pushing back to the the paddock on the on the seafront there at the where that where they start the northwest i've only had the privilege of going to it on one occasion the southern hundred club used to do a charter flight which was well organized you flew into a, a field somewhere uh, outside and uh, got coached into the to the area and we two, uh, two lads came with us and they were only fairly young and we didn't travel much but we stayed round about and down to york hairpin and it was just memorable, memorable uh, occasion. But yeah, that was one that's popped up today. And uh, Barry was straight on the case because mm -hmm. he knew all about it. And then uh, certainly there's been a few lovely comments that have popped up as well. And uh, yeah, delighted to do it. 
and yeah, it, 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 the two fifties was kind of Barry's forte, and especially when there were two strokes as well, because that is the era of mm. that time. What did it say? Nineteen eighty-five. Yeah, yeah, I don't know whether it would be eighty. You know, it'd be a bit later that we went away. It would probably be nineteen. Yeah, and it might have even have been ninety-four, ninety-five that we managed to get away to it. But yeah, that's that's the type of thing that. Uh, we've got a following of nearly three thousand now, and uh, they 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 just amaze us every day with the photographs. Sean Hogg, who's one of part of the admin team, uh, as I mentioned before, I think he's getting uh, stuff sent to him, which people have had for years, and sidecars especially, okay. you know, like three sidecars going over Berlaf Bridge and. Then people are coming on and they recognize them. And then the next thing is, it's where they stayed when they came to Douglas. And then the stories that emerge from that. There was one the other night of a, a sidecar presentation with crews up on the stage at the Villa Marina and the, the late, great Peter Neal, who was the top man on the commentary at the time in the background. And uh, certainly that got loads of comments as well. But uh, mm. You think you're going to run out, don't you? But you don't. It's a never, <laughs> never. It's a never, it's a never ending saga. <laughs> Can I ask um, you, Roy, just before we do move on, when you went to the Northwest 200, how did it, you feel for you as an experience and a growing up with the TT and going over there to to check that event out as well? How did it compare for you? It frightened the life out of me. <laughs> 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 because we were used to mass starts on the bypass. And a bit of kind of hargy bargy was always uh, kind of not going amiss. There was one memorable moment where a sidecar, and when the dust cleared, there was about three or four of them over the, the hedge on the right-hand side, picking themselves out. But we always kind of uh, were across four ways for the Southern 100. But when you were in that area and you saw the start with all the top men, going you know about 140 on that little crest over the hill and then dropping down mm. and then going around the left hander when it was just uh, you shut your eyes and then you say well it's going to sort itself out on the next lap and uh, it did you know they were coming through with the leader second third fourth but a mass start off that is uh yeah it was a bit of a bit of an eye-opener and I believe mm. we went to the Ulster once as well and that was the same kind of system we were just in and around the start finish and we saw all the the starts and that was just the same as that heading off towards the first corner like with 40 across the road is uh, is entertainment at its very very best mm. but you shut your eyes in case anything happens in the middle <laughs> but Brilliant. uh Good, good. Great. So tell us a little bit more about this, Roy. Well, this was a gem. And, and again, the person who sent this in didn't know where it was. And uh, I immediately recognized in the background there, Douglas Golf Course. Mm. And then it had to be only one place from there. Totally changed now. But it was the car racing. And I can remember that. The cars f came to the island before the... The bikes, they came about 1905 mm. with the Gordon Bennett trials, and they toured all around the island. But this probably would be, I think, it probably would have been er earlier than, the, than I can think, because I, I can remember them from about 1952 or 53. Jeff Duke, Sterling Moss, all competed in the British Empire Trophy, and they mm. had quite a few courses, but this was mm -hmm. one it's in no resemblance to what that corner is now, but it was on the clips course, which we described, I think, in one of our broadcasts where you turn right at the top of St. Ninian's, mm. top of Bray Hill there, and then went out to a place called Ballinard Road. And this was the link for, it hadn't been built at the time, but the Williston Estate. Mm. And that is turning from Ballinard Road onto Johnny Watterson's Lane, as we affectionately know it. And that course for the cars took them up onto the Cronknamona, where the TT course is. They turned right at Cronknamona, then joined the, the TT course, but went straight on at signpost, 
like many have done in the past on bikes, I can assure you, but they've <laughs> overshot. This was the proper course. Then would you believe with, uh, you see the, the drum brakes that are on those types of cars mm. and they sounded superb because they were six cylinders with a, oh, a big, big, nice. big megaphone on the back, like or a straight oh. pipe. And then they went through a little couple of twists and they went through the nursery bends by the Archibald Knox <laughs> and actually dropped down into the Manx Arms and turned right. Well, most of them did, but quite a few of them just couldn't get anchored up in time. But they turned right by the Manx Arms and then just hammered all the way in through then through Governor's Bridge onto Glencrutchie Road. And that was their course. But they had other courses for the cars which when you get photographs uh, put towards you, there, there's all kinds of different places. Bottom of Bray Hill, coming down uh, Stony Road and turning right and going up Bray Hill, up to the pits and then going down through Port Jack uh, was, a, was another course. And along the promenade and turning up by Sam Webb's and mm. up through and round by uh, St. Thomas's Church and up to the bottom of Bray Hill by a, a devised... Uh, course so the cars were quite famous and wow. jeff duke jeff duke competed as well in a an aston martin mm. going back many years so we were uh, barry was straight on the case even though he might have been taking a fare for his taxi and he yeah. got back to them straight away and said it's only one place and then there's the reverend fireblade john coldwell who lives on ballinard road and he said, I think I know where it is. And then Barry said, well, you should do, because it's at the end of your street. <laughs> and then and then I, I put in, there's the first fairway at Douglas Golf Course, right in the background as well. So uh, the, oh, Tremoda, exactly. the Tremoda State is built now, and mm. that's the view that they get. And that hasn't changed in all, all the years from that photograph to what you see now, apart from houses which are in the Tremoda state you can still look out and project all the way up through to the 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 sixth fairway at uh, douglas and then you've got the lovely now uh iconic feature of the uh the the, the stuff that they what they call extra not extra, where they burn it all uh that's at the oh, bottom yeah. of richmond hill yeah, so yeah. that that comes into the equation but yeah that that's that was one that uh, the fellow said where is it i don't know and within minutes, within minutes he, yeah. he, he had oh, the answer yeah. well, we have some fans um that joined us roy so i'm just going to share some comments if that's all right so richard davis yeah. hi there this is great mick lovely says great tt history absolutely and yeah. uh graham clutterbuck says roy moore my favorite tt voice you and barry are a mine of info yes you are yeah nice great. one um yeah. so talking of fans then roy we have Mr. John Krasinski from Missouri in the United States joining us this evening. And he's a huge fan of yours and the Isle of Man TT, of course. So he has uh, been loving the show um, so far. John, welcome. Hi, guys. Oh, How there, are you? Can you hear me now? Hi, yes, guys. Good <laughs> <laughs> evening, John. Joining us. Good. I was just telling my wife because I heard Roy say, good thing that I don't race in the TT because he wouldn't be able to pronounce my name. So I told my wife, I'm gonna, I'm 50 years old. I'm going to start training. I'm going to go get my signatures. And then I'm just going to do a lot of action right there at the Ramsey hairpin for Roy. He'll know my name by then. Uh, yeah, it's a, an ocu it's, it's part and parcel of it. And I've had to go up to riders and, and, and ask them how uh, to pass your, your horn was one and then there was a, a fella a passenger who leaf gustafsson and various others that you just go up to them and say you know apologies type of thing but uh, how would you you like your name pronounced or pronounced or whatever the correct term is and then you go through it and then you write it in the program how it would be and then in theory you don't but they, they still catch you out because there's a couple of Gary Johnsons or one Gary Johnson and a David Johnson. And then, of course, you get a John Stun. And they're all, they're all, yeah, they're all coming together. And you don't want to upset anybody, but occasionally you, you let it slip and something stupid comes out. But they appreciate oh, Roy, it. I I, if I ever have that chance, Roy, for me to be racing on that great circuit and I'm in your area, you can call me anything you want as long as it's not late for dinner. As you can see, 
<laughs> well, I I would never think twice about it. Very thick skin. Not worried. <laughs> your book your book is on its way. It's been on its way for about five days, six days, so it shouldn't be far away. I wouldn't have thought. So, John, That's tell right. us a little bit about that uh, book. I know you were sharing it with us just before we went live. I'd love for you to share the story with the the fans and everyone sure. else. Sure. Sure. Um, sure. Just just a little bit of history. Um, I'm 50 years old. I in the 80s, I corner worked at Willow Springs International Raceway in Rosamond, California. And um, I was on a motorcycle for a bit, but I couldn't afford the motorcycling. But corner working, we were volunteer. So I got to speak to a man named John Ulrich, who is the owner of Road Racing World. And he told me with my enthusiasm about motorcycle racing, I should check into the Isle of Le Mans. So 84 till now, I've been a huge Isle of Le Mans fan. I haven't been able to get over there yet but that will happen soon. So anyways, I started finding out information that I could about Ilmon via Google Chrome. What a great thing, it must be true, right? <laughs> um, and um, I came across uh, the Isle Le Mans racing page, which um, is ran by Sarah and Ian Mills, who are photographers there for the Isle Le Mans. They asked me to become a moderator. Well, within there, I met a great person named Barry Wood who's the co-partner of Mr. Roy Moore here. So I got to thinking, and I, there were a lot of questions I had, and I don't want to take up all your time, and I know I talk a lot, and I'm sorry, but <laughs> just just tell me to go if I need to. No, but, keep it rolling. Um, no, no, crack on your side. <laughs> I wanted to, I had so many questions. I, I wanted to know, you know, first of all, how the corners and the sections got their names. Um, I wanted to know, because I'd never been there. I wanted to ask different people and I just didn't want to reach out and say, hey, have you been to the Isle of the Mon? And they say, no, stupid, I haven't, or they don't know what they're talking about. Because I'll mention Isle of the Mon here in America and a lot of people don't understand. So they made me a fan of the page and I started asking questions and I've been able to ask questions and learn. So I came over to Roy's page, Roy and Barry's page, and oh my goodness, um, the, Oh, geez. How do you even say it? Roy's knowledge and listening to Roy, how can you not learn anything from listening to the man? Not not only that, uh, reading what him and Barry Wood both write. And then all the, you have Nigel Kincaid who sends beautiful pictures. You have Sean Hogg who Roy mentioned. Um, I know I'm forgetting somebody else, um, but just great knowledge. And then, um, on that page, I was introduced to the spirit of motorsport. And um, Haley, I believe I um, added you as a friend on Facebook and I looked okay. and I said, wow, this girl is very, very engaging in the conversation. And then Roy was there and it was like, whoa. So I had to be a fan of this and just, this is where I turn for my information now. Awesome, awesome. We've loved, we've been very humbled with your feedback and we know that it's it's great that it's getting out there and it's entertaining someone anyway, John. And we knew that you were such a fan of Roy and Barry and we love their page as well, the history there. And we've introduced this competition now. So we are having all these incredible entries. What have you been thinking about the entries that we've had so far? They're they're incredible. And um, I know there's a, there's a lot of pictures. I was thinking how I could fabricate a picture so I could come over. But no, that's not. But <laughs> I've, been, I, I've been looking at a lot of these pictures. Um, Mike Astill, he had a great picture. One of my favorite ones of the Rinculin, um Bridge. I think it's called number two. It's right in front of the Rinculin. See, Roy, it wouldn't be yep. just me that would that would have a hard time pronouncing stuff but um this one there the guy there with the with the beer he reminds me of i don't know are you guys familiar with king of the hill television yeah he totally <laughs> that reminds me of what they would all be doing but yeah. boy, can you imagine what their thoughts as this is that jamie coward that came by or no alan I bonner Anna, uh, alan okay. bonner yeah yeah, this picture is amazing. And then you have, I believe it's Grant Hollis that is sending all these other pictures. Mm. And just so amazing to see this. And it's just the biggest part. And what I wanted to thank everybody for was like with Roy. He, I saw him in his Mountain Memories page. And then I watched the Tea Time with, with Roy. It was a 10-episode season. And I saw a book that he did, which was the Alf Gray Collection. He got that for me, um, and he's sending it to me. That's the book he's talking about. Well, he autographed it for me, and I'm hoping that Roy Moore did as well. Wow, look at that one. 
Um, <laughs> sorry. Okay. And, um, but you guys, you're putting this on and this, I mean, whoever wins this competition that you all have, man, they're going to be so lucky. But, you know, one thing that they're not realizing that they're doing also, I don't think, and I hope they're not offended by this, but you're allowing me, an American, who I've never been able to go over there and see the culture and enjoy the races. So I'm getting to live this through your eyes. I get to hear that. I get to hear it through Roy's ears on Manx Radio during the TT week. Um, Haley, I get to hear you and engaging all these other Carl Cox, Davey mm -hmm. Todd, all these people. I mean, man, it's just like, I don't know, I'd be too big of a rock star-ish type of person over there. I'd be like, oh my gosh, or what have you. But <laughs> no, I just, it, it just sounds really neat. So thank you for what you guys do. And I mean, good luck and congratulations to whoever wins this, you, this competition. You guys, I mean, man, some brilliant shots. Um, just beautiful. Thank you, John. Roy, you got a bit of a fan there, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's always a little bit kind of taking seventy three years to become famous. But there is, there is one little thing, John. Uh, I, I, you, you're just going to become aware of it. I have or had a very, very famous relation who made a, a very big name for himself in America. Okay. He was he was a Manxman and he was my great 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 uncle. Manx born and bred, served his time as a carpenter, didn't speak a word of English, went away, joined the British Navy. His name was William Kinnish. Now, if you look that up, I'll I'll leave the information for you. William okay. Kinnish went rose to the to the post of chief carpenter of the British Navy and devised many, many inventions. And then he went to America, they got married, and he went to America with his family and uh, settled down in America. And he was the man who devised the route of the Panama Canal. And he got uh, wow. recognition, recognition from De Lesseps when he said, it, this wasn't my idea, it's credited to me but it was the, the work of a Manxman called William Kinnish. And he's buried in uh, Brooklyn. And we went away because it, it was one of those stories where he devised the Panama Canal, did lots of things in America, but then unfortunately became bankrupt. And he was buried in a pauper's grave at a, a cemetery just outside Brooklyn. And we went away because we got a headstone together on the island from the place of his birth, which was a place called Mackled. Uh, you'd have a struggle uh, pronouncing that if you hadn't seen it in front of you, but it is, I can assure you, Mackled. And uh, we shipped it away and it was, uh, it was a, a wonderful thing. But then his relations, obviously, his sons and families, they settled in America. And there's an awful lot of Kinnishes in the American phone book. But they then went on to, to be involved in the construction of the base for the Statue of Liberty on that oh, little wow. island in wow. the same place. So that was my great, great, great uncle. And if you're tracking down William Kinnish, then find out all about him and his, uh, his, his kind of life. He came back to the him. island, uh, but then got involved in a bit of uh, bit of bankruptcy, which was major kind of stuff in those days and uh, actually served a spell in Castle Russian. But when you're repeating the story, you don't tell them about that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, yeah. And see, this is this is something that I love and I hope I have another moment to say this, though, Haley. Um, Absolutely. Roy, Roy sent me a message because I was engaged and talking with him and chatting on Facebook. And um, he said that I should like this page, The Spirit of Motorsport. And then the other one, um, I'm sorry, I think it's Through the Lens, mm -hmm. the, uh, that one too. Right. So Roy just sent me, or he'll send me more message about the Kinnish. So I'll go and learn and further my knowledge. It's just having somebody like Ray, Roy is, I mean, just amazing. I, um, just wanted to show real quick. I um, I don't know if you can see this, but the book. Um, I got the the dang glare. Oh yeah, that's go. yeah, that's a that's a recognized one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. And then I also have this one other one. And Roy, please don't take it offensively, but I'm using this book and the other book to learn all I can 
because yeah. one day I'll be able to contribute really good stories to you guys and on your page yeah. and make your page grow. So Steve, Steve Hislop there at Quarter Bridge, I would suggest. But yeah, uh, yeah. good one. This, that. Is the, this is the one, Roy, and I don't know if you were the one, but you're talking about Steve Hislop. I bought this online and I'm trying to get it right there. Yeah, but signed. Signed by, signed by Steve Hislop. Hislop. Yeah, yes. I can I can guarantee having uh, had a few over the years that is his signature. Yeah, it's beautiful. Best wishes. Just what a what a sad end to his career, really, wasn't it? Mm, yeah, very, like Mike very. like Mike Halewood, really, all that time, and uh, yeah, to, to mm. Hill as well. You know, the the, the the kind of thing. Colin McRae, you know, they mm. take all these chances in their sport. And then right. they suffer. So, so Graham Hill as well. Mm. Uh, life taken from them by other incidents. It's mm. it's it's uncanny, Thank really, you. isn't it? Tragic. Yeah, it, it is. But there's, I mean, wow. I yeah, it's hard to follow up with anything that he just said. Everything mm. very true, Roy. Very true. Mm. So, John, thank you so much for joining us. The, of we course. look forward to. Uh, We've got to get you back on again because your your passion is infectious, and and I'm I'm sure next year when you come over to the TT, you're gonna to have to join us again then, and I'm sure you'll have some entries after the TT next year as well to enter in next year's competition. I'm sure. Boy, I hope so. I'm getting ready to have major back surgery. Um, okay. I'm gonna have my L4 and S1 fused together, and I have about eight to twelve weeks of recovery as long as everything goes well. But boy, I'll be out there running through the around the hairpin if I have to. <laughs> yeah. I can say my name. There's that Kucherski guy again. We got to know, him, of course. But no, John, John who? John who? <laughs> John Kucherski. Yeah, it'll be that guy again. Just not late for dinner. But no, guys, thank you. You guys, I have so much respect for mm -hmm. you, Roy. Uh, to let Barry know. Uh, Haley, mm -hmm. you do a great job. Um, thank you so everything much. is great and thank you so much for this moment this is something i'll remember till the day i go somewhere else so uh, thank you guys you. thank you john take care we look forward to seeing you on here again soon obviously bye-bye take care thanks cheers john thank you how amazing roy hey we've had quite a few yeah, people cheers. commenting so far so we've got um uh, Mick Lovely says once again, must say hello to John Cole by the Reverend Fireblade. And yeah. um, Emma Bardsley's asking, are you doing anything for the Manx GP, please? So will you be doing anything for the Manx GP, Roy? I think we should maybe do something on here. There are there are Definitely. plans afoot. Uh, we've we've, mm -hmm. we've covered we covered the pre TT classic with a, a kind of a board that we have. Mm -hmm. And I think that's been publicised, and that mm -hmm. appeared to go quite well. And then uh, we did, we didn't don't get involved in the TT because obviously the TT is run by the the Isle of Man government, and if they don't ask you, well, then you you can't do anything because the TT is a a listed brand. But we did a little kind of a, an aside for a, a group of Irishmen where we did a couple of races. And it was uh, it was very entertaining actually because there's a song called the TT Hall of Fame, and it was written by a, a man who used to be on Manx Radio called David Collister, and he rang Peter Neal up one night and he said, "Hey Peter, you say you're doing?" So he said, "Yeah, what you want?" And he said, "Just tell me a load of TT riders and a load of bikes." And the next thing, the TT Hall of Fame was formed. And his grandson is part of a business kind of commitment for the Isle of Man government to raise interest in the Isle of Man to, to locate to. So they all got together because it was in the shutdown. And they played a couple of races and, and played the TT Hall of Fame. And apparently it went down quite well. Mm. We did the Southern 100. But there is a, a kind of another thing that's getting developed at the moment and four Grand Prix, and if it comes off, which I'm confident it will do, it's not the race night boards because they're old hat now. Everybody's seen them in it. It's like a comedian who tells jokes. You know, <laughs> once you've once you've heard the joke, it it doesn't become funny anymore unless it's uh, Del Boy falling through the bar. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm knocking the wrong. I'm knocking the I'm knocking the wrong chandelier down. But uh, it's uh, it's it's going to be. Moving with the times, and there's a chap called Ned Bowers who's on the case because 
whereas the TT has never been covered by television, certainly in Manx Grand Prix for the last three years that I know of, they've actually filmed the races with a delay for obvious reasons, but they've had cameras at Ramsey Hairpin, they've had cameras here, there and everywhere. And they did interviews at the start because the Manx Grand Prix is not a protected uh, brand. It's mm. the Manx Grand Prix always has been. Well, it was the amateur races for four years and then it went become the Manx Grand Prix from 27, I think it was. Ren oh no, maybe later than that, started 27. So from 30 onwards, it's always been known as the Manx Grand Prix. So there is something on the agenda and it's going to be a gathering. Mm. It's not going to be uh, on this system. It's the possibility that we'll be, we'll be gathering at a, a famous venue on the TT course, which doesn't give much away. And uh, we'll be uh, possibly going into modern technology to bring you the excitement of, uh, of, of uh, the Manx Grand Prix week. Because again, you can't mention the classic because the classic is a brand name of the classic TT. So mm. this will be purely Manx Grand Prix racing and uh, maybe a few interviews live at the venue and a few taking part in a, in a funny sort of way. So that's uh, under wraps at the moment, but we've just released a, 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 mat a pre preview of what possibly could happen. Okay, excellent, exciting. I cannot wait for that. Um, brilliant. Uh, so I hope that answers your question, Emma. Uh, Richard Davies says, can we have the Purple Helmets again, please, MGP week? I think they were quite, <laughs> they were quite a success, the Purple Helmets, weren't they, Roy? It went, well, <laughs> apparently, uh, it, yeah, I, well, it's difficult to say, but the, the general response of uh, people have coming back, like they did, they're so laid back characters, aren't they? They did a show down in Ramsey, and uh, again, they had a few new uh, speeds approaching 100 mile an hour. In the, in the market square and different things, and the fellow was keen to get his clothes off again in a different <laughs> a different sequence. So that story mm. that Derry told about right at the end is just absolutely priceless. And we had lovely yeah. feedback from it. Yeah. And I think there was something like eight thousand people. Yeah, there was in the end. Yeah, yeah that, 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 that came came and uh, do it. So that wouldn't be anything to do with me that would have to be mm. uh, my management yeah. is me and if we get yeah. involved all well and good and if we don't yeah. well tough fantastic yeah. gotta get them back on again um so just to remind everybody so we will be uh, talking a little bit more about the competition which ends at midnight tonight so it's a tt through your lens um and you can enter stills videos make sure you share your story and the narrative that comes along with those entries you have until midnight tonight and then the tomorrow uh, at the until the 2nd of August the public vote opens as well so if you haven't entered anything you don't have any content feel free to get involved in the voting that starts tomorrow as well all right so Roy we've got a couple more guests and these guests are strong contenders really for the competition the first guy Mr Mike Assels I'm going to invite him into the studio with us he's Mike, hello, good evening. Good evening, good evening. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm all good. Uh, an absolute honour, Roy. I'm sorry, <laughs> Hayley, obviously, but to, to join Roy. Uh, just hearing that voice and hearing the stories, I'm sat here watching the web, the webcast and just chuckling away and listening to the stories, just like it is when it's on the radio, so mm -hmm. loving it. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Nice to meet you too. We had a preview, uh, some of your photographs. It's going to be a difficult task. I mean, we're going to be reduced down to a certain amount, but uh, certainly some of the stuff, I'm, I've, I've, for obvious reasons, I've got to check everything out. And then the, the final 20 will be presented to me to, to do the, the, the judging. So it's going to be, uh, yeah, going to be, going to be entertaining. Yeah. It'll be, yeah, it could be a good job. And we'll look at it in a, in a way. I'll probably have to gain a little bit of, a uh, bit of help from me cousin. Uh, from afar so we'll be able to kind of uh, I'll have to rely on him to give me the <laughs> the right directions for the for the correct result but yeah. I suppose like everything else it will be uh, it'll be down on to you know what you feel is there the atmosphere of the shot mm. uh, Absolutely. There's some terrific ones that are coming up now like of uh, collective bikes 
Mm. And yeah. it, it, it gives you the indication, if you've not been to the Isle of Man, how difficult it is to get more than two or three bikes in a, in a shot. And mm. there was one one that popped up at the bungalow there. Uh, I think there's five. The approach to the bungalow we mentioned before. Yeah, there's mm. Dean, Har Dean yeah. Harrison and uh, somebody at Greaver Castle. That's, and that's, that's Guy Martin, 2017. Guy Martin, is that oh, one of my, yeah. Yeah. Ah. yeah, there's the significance of it because it was 2017. And I'm pretty sure if I remember right, we did only get the one lap with Guy or yeah. part of one lap because he uh, came off at Doran's, was it? Doran Spence, just yeah. a leg, a leg. Yeah, but that's that's a, a, a practice night uh, venue because of the light conditions. I, I've been reliably informed anyway that uh, where Dean is just coming out there, this would be a race start. Well, then, fair comment, it would be a different sun direction, you know, whether it be the afternoon, but the evening shots, some of the, the shots that the boys have come up with, with the through the visor, uh, the eyes, the concentration level required to get through there at at that speed is pretty impressive. And uh, that's yeah, that's actually from it. the race on uh, the, the Superbike race, 2017 first lap. 2017, actual, first yeah, yeah, no, uh, uh, yeah, 2017. Because what stood out to me, only looking at it afterwards, was uh, Guy Martin started number eight, and Dino started nine, and within yeah. those first short miles to Greber, he's already taken past him and, and started to put it on. So it showed how much guy was struggling before he even reached where he had his sad little moment. Oh. Yeah. That it's was the year. Spot. Was that the year that uh John McGuinness had problems with his Honda at the Northwest where he yeah. uh the, the yeah. linkage it was uh what the fly wire or oh. something like that that wasn't on quite working. Yeah. I mean, I've I've not been raised on technology. As if you've seen me work on a computer, you would be quite <laughs> thing. But I've followed I've followed progress, obviously, on bikes. And then this flywire just didn't appeal to me at all. You know, I would like I would like to see a lumbar wire going from the throttle to going into the carburetor, and you screwed it down in the the old monoblock way. And uh, I I love the comment that John McGuinness when he he said he hates golf. And he finished up on a golf course and he wasn't very well <laughs> yeah. when he landed. And he said, God, it's not going to end like this. He said, me leaving you on a golf course. And uh, But he's recovered. And then he came back and we had the pleasure of doing the commentary on the uh, the race that he came back to win, which was, I think, the 2019 Classic 500 mm. on the pattern. So It yeah. could have been a bit of a dream team with Guy Martin and uh, John McGuinness at Honda that year. It was... Mm. Yeah. The bike played its part, but just them pairing a team, I thought it was it was really exciting. Yeah. Mm. When you think actually how, how Guy Martin, his accidents that he's had, uh, you you wouldn't pick those places to come off like, would you? You no. wouldn't pick uh, Balagheri, and you certainly wouldn't pick uh, the Leg Bridge oh, Dorans. Yeah. Uh, they're not uh, they're not ah. they're not places on the uh, Quarter Bridge, Ramsey Hairpin, maybe, but. Uh, <laughs> Certainly not uh, not going through those those particular venues. So he has uh, he has he has been off other places as well. He came down to the southern once. I don't think it was with uh, the his sponsor's intention, but he rode a, a Suzuki in the classic down there, and the thing locked up on the approach to cross four ways. We weren't on duty, but he came to ground there, and I think he did a bit of damage to himself then. But uh, it didn't go down too well with the people he was racing for in the TT. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> but, yeah, but he he was a he's a star man. Like any, you can't help but just help a character, but, like, just a character, yeah, character. Yeah. yeah. And we've had a few over the years too. When you think about it, and they've they've been photographed and different things. And yeah, we're we're very lucky really to have people, as we mentioned about on the Roy and Barry side about how people are now just producing all this stuff which has been lying idle for for years uh, because you know nobody wants to see it in their household and all of a sudden they're putting it on there and there's like thousands of people now getting the privilege of seeing uh, some very very special photography over the years yeah oh, what a shout it's a difficult one for you Roy if you can get these two riders 
I'll yeah, buy you the... a pint next time I'm over. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like saying name that woman when you can't see her face. <laughs> it's difficult. I've got I've got a thing for photos of bikes going away. And I think it probably comes back to the first place I ever saw a bike at the TT, which was at McGuinness's and watching them pull away and just the I, there's just something so dynamic about it. And when we were at, um, do you know the corner? You, you should be able to get this easy, I think. I think it's the, the possibly the exit from Guthrie's, is it? It is, yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. Um, but that, that one with the bemoter on, that should tell me who it is. But there'll be somebody screaming at the, at the screen now, telling me, <laughs> oh, didn't you, didn't you realise that was such and such a body? Uh, yeah, green leathers at the bottom, so that's kind of a combination. But I, I'll I'll have to pass on both of them, I'm afraid. So I had to uh, do my homework because it is really difficult. Perhaps they should put some of the race numbers on the back of the bikes, just so for, for chance when we get photos like this, you can figure it out who it is. Now I had to do my homework and go back through the uh, program, but according to the program, it is Stefano Benetti leading and Ben Wiley behind on the bimo. Yeah, ben Wiley would have been the one. But then again, you see, those of you who've been involved for, for many years, in my day, when I first, um, and you used to have them, in Manx Grand Prix, they were issued with a big yellow thing with big bands on that they had to tie onto their leathers. And then in the early days, all the TT had to carry back numbers. I mean, it's always a bone of contention with us. They, they did a parade lap last year in 2019, and they stuck a little kind of four by four number on a on a fairing somewhere but even the modern fairings that you've you've got now on the front it's very difficult to pick numbers out yeah and the only the only benefit you've got is that they're always the same top 20 so we're not getting many more than 20 through ramsey hairpin and you just recognize them from the fact that they were like that the day before or the day before that they're exactly yeah. the same there's no difference. They're, they're all John McGuinness helmets and Guy Martin helmets and Lee Johnson and 13 and stuff like that. So yeah. it's instant. But then if you get somebody mixed up, a lower order rider, as we call them, then to try and pick their numbers out from, from a from a program, yeah. just to, just to, to, to give them the, 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 the obligatory mention, you know, because you don't want them to go through and think you're, you're not concentrating on them. It's it's yep. very near impossible, but the the numbers on the back would solve all the problems. Yeah, I mean, if I remember right, I think that was a practice session. Um, that was the day. Oof, yeah, I think it was a Sunday, or if it wasn't, it was the Monday in twenty. I think that was another one in twenty seventeen. And I'm, if I remember right, it's the day that Lee Johnson came off his Honda <laughs> at Grieber. Grieber, Grieber Castle. Yes. Yeah, because yeah. the session started and stopped constantly. There was red flags and it was just wave red flags. So the guys were just coming through slow, which was great for some you know, easy photography. But if you're trying to get really dynamic photos, it's not so easy when they're just tootling through. But yeah. um, I, I'm pretty sure that that was a, a practice session. It's mm. good. It's a good one because it's uh, yeah, a tricky little spot. Go three is like, and then you've got that left hander after it. Yeah. And then, of course, then of course you've got Ian Hutchinson's uh, kind of demise <laughs> at the next yeah. corner after that. Yeah. At the Ligorous All Sorts Bridge, as the, the boys used to call it. <laughs> the right hander. How they get through there at that speed, I do not know. And uh, certainly it was a bit of a, a climax and a bit of a, a kind of a hectic moment when the, the news came through that uh, Ian Hutchinson was off at uh, yeah. that little, uh, little bridge. But uh, yeah. And that one there, that that just constantly, I've, I've been out there to watch. And I did mention, I think, last time that where that gentleman from that program, that the fella I can't pronounce from America, <laughs> mentioned, yeah. somebody, somebody stood in that gateway for quite far back and must have just hit it spot on at 130. I don't know what speed he'd be on. It'd be about 5,000 to the second or something like that. And got John McGuinness in full flight. I'm shot pretty from sure, that yeah. I've seen the image, yeah. yeah. Fabulous. This is not a perspective that you normally see. No, and no. The perspective is similar to that. Whereas, yeah, great photo from the other side. Oh, yeah. It was. It was. It took a while. Like it's. It's the. It's a one-off, but uh, 
Yeah, that would be it. Maybe if that was ended in the competition, I'd have to vote for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember with that one, because I was trying to work out where it was. If it, I'm sure it was the right one. And I ended up on Street View looking at the, the curbstones before I could yeah. go, yeah, that's exactly where it is. That's it. You get you get a feel for mountain shots because of the continuous white line. Yeah. You know, there's a continuous white line for local traffic, so they don't uh, do anything stupid in the mist. <laughs> and then uh, going back kind of years again too, there was there was none of that. It was only yellow lines that they had over the mountain, and that that's a good one. A Connor Connor has just been mm. round. Would you believe it? With there's a, a movement on to help local businesses, and he's the uh, he's the top man on it. I don't know whether the president, chairman, or whatever it is, and he he offered for the fact to hire a trike, or the trike was given to him. And he took the two highest bidders round. And there's one other gentleman, is a chap called Hubert Kameen, who lives in the farm at Ballacrane and has done for 80 odd years and has seen all the action of the, the TTs that he can remember from Ballacrane because it's Ballacrane Farm. And the number of photographs that you come across with his fleet of vans in the background. Uh, he preferred Sherpa vans, would you believe? And yeah. he's seen all the commentators out there, Tommy Robb and Morris Maudsley and 1984, a fellow staggering into the commentary box full of nerves called Roy Moore. Mm -hmm. But uh, he took them round on the trike and there was a chap who'd, who'd made the special effort to, to make sure that he got on it. And he said it was just an unbelievably good experience to Connor to describe him through the intercom on the trike to the two sitting on the back as to what speed he'd be doing, what he was thinking about at this particular part of the course and, and all through it. And uh, Connor, Connor's just moved into new premises. So if mm. Carl Cox does a function <laughs> down in Ramsey <laughs> lately, you'll have, you'll have the whole of the Murick, you'll have the whole of the Murick Lake. They can, they can drain it and get everybody uh, stamping down there and instead, of blocking, instead of blocking Parliament Street. I <laughs> love it. Uh, approached so my, a lot of approached a lot of bank. It's no. Yeah, well, on, I'll, 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 it's a difficult one to be fair, Roy. That is, that's um, just after two dogs. Oh yeah, through uh, through Appledean. Yes. Yeah, yes. approached so between to... uh, Appledean, just... Appledean and uh, uh, Greba Bridge. Bridge. Yeah. yeah, the two dogs on the left hand side. That get decorated every Christmas with uh, mm. Father Christmas outfits. Yeah, and not sure on. who the rider is though. It was just that 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 photo um, just it kind of summed up the rawness for the TT to me. It, with the light down, it was really late on. Uh, it was an evening practice. Um, yeah, it would be. Not, it, it's difficult getting photos in that light. Um, and I just I remember taking it, and and, and only when I edited it, looked at it, and just thought. It does sum up just the, the rawness of taking on the TT course on your own, as you do, just just like that. And yeah. Just, yeah, just the light just seems to be just caught right. The, the it, the, it goes ever so dark under the trees when the sun starts going down on those yeah. evening practices. Well, that would be it. It would be heading for Peel, you see, to, to illuminate the castle, so it would be... Uh, hidden behind there. Yeah. I have noticed a few names uh, that have been flashed up on the screen about people who are watching. And the, I think there was one, Richard Ratcliffe, and he's really into the, into the photography and he's put some terrific photographs. And then from uh, Mr. Conrad, from who's now living in America, and his collection from when he was living on the island has been resurrected. And if you go into the Roy Moore and Barry Wood site, well, then you, you're in for a treat because the, you don't have to say anything. You don't have to describe them or tell them. Just just like that, you've explained what your feelings were when you got that photograph back. And it's mm. absolutely right. Difficult place to get. Uh, a back shot leaves you with, uh, you know, kind of where is it? And yeah. yeah, it could have could have been two or three places that, but it, yeah, it's for, difficult. Yeah, 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 it is difficult. But uh, you yeah, know, there's been some terrific stuff, and uh, yeah, I'm go I'm going to leave the island for a couple of weeks when we announce the results. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Mind Appledean. Oh, sorry. I, just while I'm on, because in case they are watching, the guys at Appledean, the marshals, 
aren't the best bunch of people. I mean, they're all mm. awesome, but um, yeah. we had a great crack down at Appledean with them guys down there. And it's a fantastic corner to go and watch. Anywhere from sort of uh, Greba Castle down through Appledean, if, if, if people are wanting somewhere just out of the way to go and watch, a really good spot. And if you want to get to it, if you just follow the old pay, uh, railway line railway to Peel, line. Yeah. Yeah, mm. which has all been resurfaced now, and you can get there on a mountain bike with ease and uh, get sorted out and get up to anywhere from probably through the high well through that well you could get to Balavitchel and through the Highlander and then all the Greba Castle Appledean Greba Bridge and then on the way to Gorslee where there's another band of marshals who uh, who look after you as well on the big mm. sweeping right hander there at Gorslee so yeah good lads so, Mike, before we have to say our goodbyes, I really want to touch on your story involved in the campaign that you, was it two years ago that you were involved in? I think Raising it was 2018. Or... Yes. So it was um, not long after Dan Neen um, had, had left us <laughs> and just trying to find a way to just sort of give something back as a fan. Um, I was batting ideas around with my twin brother, um, who is my, the other photographer that always, we, we're always everywhere together. So if you see mm -hmm. two people looking absolutely identical, it would be me and my brother. Um, and it was, it, it, to explain it, listening on the radio, as I did many, many, many years before I ended up coming to the TT, just even the, the practice ones, when it's just, you, you, the talking, but you can hear the atmosphere in the background and always you get to hear the klaxon and, Gary Thompson shouting, attention, paddock, attention, paddock. And, and it builds up that sort of apprehension and tension. And I, I always said, it'd be brilliant if you could have it on your phone as a little, um, like a, a ringtone or something. So um, I got in touch with, um, I think it was Joe from uh, Manx Radio and said, this is my idea. Can you help in any way, shape or form? And I think she just went and stuck a, a, a phone in front of Gary Thompson and said, can you just say attention paddock, attention paddock for this reason? Which he did. Brilliant. And then he sent the file back to me and I managed to hunt around and find some audio of the, uh, of the klaxon. So I had the, 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 the proper clip. Um, we decided to just put it online and say a voluntary donation. Um, I think I'd said a pound or two pound or whatever. Um, voluntary donation and here's the download links for free because we didn't have a way to sort of separate it and I think in the end I'm pretty sure it was about a thousand pound um, mm, great I think there's the audio from it let's have a little listen I should I should have got involved in that it was Joe mm. Pack who Joe did Pack. Joe Paddock. Pack. attention paddock <laughs> yeah. yeah that's yes. the one yes, it was attention, Joe paddock. Pack. attention paddock yes. thanks to her yeah and she said will you do and back to the grandstand uh, which is our, our kind of thing. But she thought that I had a proper phone where I would just kind of say it into the phone and all that. But mine is uh, like a thing like a, like a car battery. So I didn't have the ability to do it. And I let, I let her down, really. She said, oh, well, we'll meet up and I'll just say, and now we hand you back to the grandstand. And that mm. would be like to go with the uh, attention paddock, bing bong, attention paddock, attention paddock. <laughs> But it never worked out, so my apologies for that. But you oh. probably wouldn't have raised a thousand pounds. No, no, I've not raised, not raised equally as much. We might have to do that in the future, Roy. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Mike, thank you so much for your time and your thank entries. You for me on. They are thank absolutely you. stunning. And best of luck with the competition. Thank you. Fingers crossed. Yeah, and we look forward to hopefully having you back on here again soon. Cheers. Okay, Take Mike, care. Thank you. All, Thanks, the best, Mike. All the best. All the best. So we've had quite a few comments, um, Roy. So we've got um, everyone's excited about your Manx GP special, which is fantastic. So am I. And uh, yeah, brilliant. OK, so we have Roy last week. We tried to get Grant Hollis on here, if you remember, and he had a terrible Wi-Fi connection. It he's, wasn't entered, good. <laughs> no, he's entered a whole load of uh, amazing content as well. And um he used to stay at Manan and Grenada's Hotel, the Rider Man, on the promenade. So we're going to try and get him in the studio with us this evening. Let's see how his Wi-Fi is. Grant, welcome. Hello, both. You okay? Yeah. Hi, Thank Grant. All right. Us. Yeah, good. My Wi-Fi is sort of coming in, coming in and out. So if I talk over you, I apologise now. 
no, no problem. problem. At least you've got a decent name to pronounce. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You just struggle with that a bit, isn't it? <laughs> Grant, thank you so much for your entries. They're incredible. And your passion on the page as well. You've really been uh, a huge a huge contribution to, to building the spirit of motorsport with us and um a little cheerleader really in the background. So we're we're grateful for that. So tell us about your history coming to the ETT. Um, 1981 was the first year I came over. Wow. And um, how we sort of start, started off, we were sort of 17, 18, and we used to drink in the local pub and play darts in that local pub. And the landlord had been over in the 70s, um, and we all had motorbikes and the long hair and the leather jackets and all that carry on. And he said, right, I've got an idea with this. He says, we'll all put a pound a week in every time we play darts and then we'll do something at the end of the season so we said yeah it'll be fine we'll just probably just end up going drinking it or want something to eat or whatever so a couple of weeks before the tt he said right you need to get yourself all sorted for the friday of this date i can't remember the exact date because we're going to the isle of man well, of course we all looked at each other and like we're going to the isle of man we expected to be going to the pub up the road type of thing you know and he booked he booked a flight from carlisle to ronald's way so we all got ourselves sorted out we came across, um, we got off the flight, we jumped in a couple of taxis, I think it was, or a minibus or whatever it was. We got to um, Balacrem when it was the pub and we all went running through and somebody shouted, they're here, they're here. We ran right through the pub, out the back into the back garden, jumped up on the wall, looked over the wall, bear in mind we'd never seen anything like this before in our lives. And the first thing we saw, first thing we saw was a sidecar coming past and the passenger clipped his clipped his boot on the wall as they, were, as they were going up the hill. And everybody just looked at each other and were like, what the hell have we come to here? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> and, and it sort of went on from there, really. It, it just escalated, it, you know. And then the following year, obviously, we told some more of the lads. And, and, the, and I think 82, there was, I think it was about 10 of us came across. We didn't come on bikes. We just came across. And then 83, we came on the bikes. And then it just... The rest is history, as they say, isn't it? We've, we've just come ever since. So, and it, there's been sort of big teams throughout the 80s, and then people go away and get married and have families and whatever, and, and it sort of dwindles off. But we're out the other side now. You know, everybody's come out and they've sort of paid their mortgage off, and the kids have gone and everything. So, we're back up to quite a big team again. And it's pretty much all the original crew that, that sort of came in the 80s. So, we've had some good times, you know, some fantastic laughs and cracks and. And what are the good times on the bike, good times in the pubs, and yeah, so we've 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 done it proud, I think. <laughs> Excellent. We've got Barry Wood joined us on the conversation here on the live chat, Roy. And he's saying Grand Hallows race at Jeremy right. Road. <laughs> Did he? That's Very right, yeah. 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 Good yeah, right, Barry. 19... 1989, I think it was. And uh we it was the meeting that sort of came with at the same time as the Manx Grand Prix. So we said, right, what we'll do, we'll go over, watch the banks, and then we'll, we'll nice we'll do. We just started racing. I still have my orange jackets. I don't know where you actually get away with it now on the on GRB Southwick, obviously not because it doesn't run anymore, but that level of meeting. So anyway, so we came across and I had a, a 350 power valve. Um, so a couple of nights before, we said we'd have a drive round because we weren't even seen it. You know, we said we'll have a drive round. So we drove round in this crappy old yellow transit of mine, and we drove round and drove round. And there was two or three guys stood at the side of the road and they, they just had like sort of sticks and they were just tapping the tarmac down. And we're like, what are they doing? And as we drove around and drove around and drove around and eventually one of them stuck this brush out in front of the van and stopped us. And he said, uh, what are you doing, lads? He says, uh, oh, we're racers, we're racers, you know. And he went, oh, yeah. He says, but what are you doing? We've noticed you're going round and round. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're racing here tomorrow. We're just checking the circuit out. And he went, and they all just started laughing. He said, well, I've got some bad news for you, lads. You're going the wrong way around. <laughs> so we've been driving the opposite way around. <laughs> so anyway, we just went to the pub after that and then came back the following day and got set up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but brilliant. It was, honestly, it was one of the best days of my life. I mean, I raced club level for a couple of years, but that just stands out so much, that meeting. It was just unbelievable. Brilliant, brilliant. Wow. The was plans. The, there was plans uh, to to grant to resurrect it in 2020. The Andreas mm. Racing uh, Club had been reformed, and one of their ambitions was to get racing on the Jerby West 
course again it's a bit bumpy from the, the left hander at the end of the over the pillbox down through to the greenhouses section or color lane bridge and uh, certainly that was kind of a, a place that needed a bit of attention but it was their intention to to do road racing so you would have had the at the go round the crunk and then the big Balavaran straight all the way through before you got to turn left where you were you could get incredible speed going down through there and mm. uh, yeah but it's it's not to be but they did have uh, Andreas on on Sunday Saturday Sunday so we have sampled uh, racing on the Isle of Man uh, well in advance of anything that you've had over there oh. right yeah yeah, it was uh, it was certainly an eye opener because, like I say, I was on this three fifty power valve, which was pretty bog standard at the time, and it was when the uh, the X ups had just come out. So obviously, the difference in in speed of them, and, and of course, we entered everything we possibly could to sort of get the maximum of fun. So we're in the thirteen hundred open, I think it was, and we sort of got halfway down that straight, and there was somebody I don't know who it was passed me on an X up. I was doing maybe one twenty, and they were doing sort of. 175, 180 or whatever it was. And he must have passed me about six inches away. Oh, dear. I just like, you know, like a potato in a pants moment. It was like, ah, what the hell? I'm just having <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was, it was superb. Brilliant. Good one. There were some fairly, fairly big names there. You know, there was, there was like Nigel Barton and people like that. And, you know, so there was some good, good level of riders there at that, that, that time. There's a, there's a photograph. Again, if you look at the Roy Moore Barry Wood site, which has just surfaced today and somebody is actually selling it as Joey Dunlop. And they all said, you know, he never went down. Of course, Barry, Barry Wood and one or two others have quickly put them right. That coming from Ireland uh, on his Tiger Cub days, this was going down to the same course that you went round, the Jerby West. Uh, it was actually him and it's been confirmed that it's him. Uh, on mm. his first kind of experience of uh, 350 yams or 250 yams. And he was coming out of the, the left-hander that takes you on to that uh, bumpy bit down through to the, the, the Killalane Bridge. And certainly mm. it's been confirmed by family now that it was him. So it's a very, very early Joey Dunlop career. And wow. somebody quite mm. rightly pointed out, I think it was, who was it that was... Somebody, quite, I think it was Gail um, Griffiths or somebody, that his number, Rennie Road, was number 26. And how many TT wins did he have? Wow. Mm. Yeah. 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 Ir ironic, yeah. really, isn't it? Yeah. Ironic. Yeah. I, I, saw, I saw that picture, and because I actually made a copy of it for the reason being, um, on, on, the, on the Facebook page that I run for the over 50s, there was a, somebody put some uh, Joey pictures on, and there was a lady asked, did he always wear a yellow helmet all the time? And nobody really responded to it. Now, probably you, nobody actually knew the answer to that. And then I saw that picture this morning, and I thought, right, I'll copy that, and I'll send it to her and say, look, actually, he didn't. There's, there's one picture here where he – because I think he had, a, a, like, a brownish open face helmet then, didn't he? With he did, yeah. Around the visor, yeah. Yeah, yeah so – That's it. Yeah, brilliant. Well, Grant, thank you so much so, for yeah, your was, entries. It's well, been yeah, entertaining us. Go for it, Grant. Is that one of Grant's you know, that's up sorry, there I now, Haley? Yeah, Grant, this is one of your shots. Oh, I lost you. I can see the picture, but I'm, you're breaking up. Breaking up. I, I don't think. Can, can you hear me or not? We can, yeah, hear, we can you. hear you. We, we can, can hear, hear you, Grant. I can hear you. Right. I, I, Okay, yeah, I'm, you're just coming through, dead breaking up. So, again, if I talk over you, um, yeah, so the picture well, was up at um, Gates 2017, I think it was. I'm not quite sure, I'll need to check it. As I think I sort of said on the text that goes along with it, Keppelgate, uh, particularly for the Manx and the, and the classic TT, is obviously a lot quieter. Um, uh, but he, he, we were up there, and there was probably maybe 15, 20 vehicles up there, and everybody was sort of jumping in and out of vehicles and whatever. Ages and ages and ages, and everybody sort of jumped up and got to the fence 
And I sort of stood back and because I couldn't get. Oh, he's gone, I think. Oh, the Wi Fi. Oh, the Wi Fi. Wi Fi, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just have to get him back on again, aren't we, Roy? Um, well, yeah, that's it. That was a good photograph. It was uh, fantastic. The, the instant thing that you think about that is that to get to Keppel Gate in TT week, you've got to go to Ramsey and go up over the mountain in mm. Manx Grand Prix week. You can, I've done it many, many times. And I know Barry and his mum. And Milo used to go up there regular as well because it's such a – you don't even have to get out of your car. You can just park up there and, and watch mm -hmm. them coming around the 33rd. And uh, what did they say? It's the seventh – I think it's the seventh mark on the road that the good fellas always go over to get lined up to go through Keppel. But uh, it's much easier in Grand Prix week, if you can hear us, Grant, isn't it? Because you can come yeah, from the Gregna Bar and then turn left – and straight into it, and it's always good place as well for, again, the marshals up there are tried and trusted, and uh, they'll, you know, the really, really good spot for a bit of lunch, and away you go. And it's always yeah, nice when, when you're when, when you're on there to to get somebody who's running a bit late, get pulled off because they're, they're not going to get to Ramsey in the desired time, and then just sit there watching them steaming away as they uh, have to watch the practice. There's our, mm. our trusted members of the uh, oh, yeah. of the boys in the background <laughs> as well, yeah. and uh, certainly yeah. they had to deal with a bit of tragedy at Balaf Bridge uh, last year. But by the same token, uh, another group of people who, uh, yeah, they are absolutely faultless and travelling mm. marshal on duty. And I don't think it looks like Ned Bowers, but I don't know whether it is or not. No, it's not Ned Bowers, but uh, certainly somebody will be able to tell us. Uh, who that is, the travelling marshal in the background. I think that was 2016, if I remember rightly. Yeah, that'd probably be Ian Locker on the, the Eddie Laycock's oh. bike, was it? It was disappointment, yeah, it was, in, yeah. t disappointment in yeah. 2019 because Dean Harrison was due to ride that and uh, Eddie Laycock, who was a past winner, and his group, they're terrific to talk to and, and Ian Locker's involved in there somewhere as well and dean went out i think on the friday night and he touched the the bank at laurel bank somewhere or in that area and damaged his shoulder and he couldn't uh, he couldn't ride the, the bike on the on the saturday the day after i think so That's that was right, disappoint yeah. disappointment for them but ian locker was a regular mm -hmm. campaigner of it this is another great one this just... yeah, yeah this is just this just saying, that's uh, pre-Swan days. People always sometimes get confused thinking that the Central has been part of TT history from day one, from mm. 1911. But the Swan is a relatively new pub. And it's always nice to get a photograph off the, the Parliament Square in Ramsey without the pub on the left, the, the Swan Hotel. Yeah, we were just, we were just sat there. We got, got as far as... Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? We can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. You can hear you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Got you. Okay. Right. Um, yeah. Just on the, on the last one, we were just sat there in the uh, in the afternoon. I think it was it might have been a Tuesday. We were maybe a, a sprint day or something, and we'd all sort of sat down and we're just sitting watching the bikes going through and we're nursing the hangover and feeding it with fish and chips and thinking about going over the mountain. And we just sat there for what seemed like hours and hours and hours, and it was just continuous bikes coming through. And it was just, again, one of them sort of, you, you couldn't sort of plan it or anything. It was just a special moment. Just all the lads stood together having a great crack, talking about the night before, watching the bikes going through, and then having a good tear ass over the mountain back to Douglas. Mm. So, yeah. But but like you say, you know, before the, before the Swan pub, and I think the garage has probably changed a little bit now as well, isn't it, behind the central? Yeah, slightly, oh, yeah. but uh, that's that's up around that area. That used to be a, a, a kind of a headstones where they they did headstones for for or was it on the left where the where the Swan is? But certainly in and around that area is where the original BBC, when they did the commentary of the TT, were located. I think it was on the approach right. uh, where that garage uh, that was Mulcrease garage. Uh, so serving them there but i think prior to that was a monumental masons and that was their base for doing the commentary from ramsey the bbc chaps uh for the tt 
Mm. Mm. Well, Grant, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for your multiple entries. I wish you the best of luck with winning the VIP experience. Sadly, Nan and Grandad no longer have the ride of my so you won't be able to stay with them next year, but I'm sure. No, we'll unfortunately not. <laughs> <laughs> Some I'm fine sure times in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll have to um you'll have to fill me in on some stories when I see you at the TT next year. Yeah, he's got a lot to answer for, Chris. We're all <laughs> welcome home al alcoholics and skint because of your granddad. <laughs> <laughs> My granddad never. <laughs> cool, <Brilliant>. yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Grant. Best of luck with the competition. Okay, thanks a lot. All right, thanks Thank so much. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Cheers, Grant. All the best. You too. Cheers, right, mate. Right. Wow, Roy, you've uh, got quite the job on your hands, I think, when we we managed to get it down to 20 anyway tomorrow. Yeah, we certainly mm -hmm. have. And it's uh, yeah. that's that's the – if you had to go through the lot, it would be a little bit difficult. But, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. we'll we'll make a decision. And, you know, we get the VAR out, I think. Yeah. Like in the football, <laughs> like in the football. Yeah. Brilliant. Get a, get a controversial decision. <laughs> well, we've had Mick Lobley who said thanks for a cracking show. And he's actually entered the competition while we've been live. So best of luck with that, Mick. I look forward to looking at your entry. Um, yeah, brilliant. So, Roy, thank you so much once again for your stories, for your tales of the TT. And um, yes, everyone, the competition is still open till midnight. And the public vote opens tomorrow. And then the great Roy Moy will, will be working and trying to get the winners out of the top 20. So, Roy, thank you once again. Uh, love listening to your stories. And I look forward to being on here again with you sometime soon. Yeah, well, it's uh, it's like everything else, isn't it? It's, uh, yeah, it's a challenge, but we'll, we'll rise to it and away <laughs> we go. Thanks, Roy. Yeah. From the... Thanks very much, guys. That was the Spirit and Motorsport TV talking all things to TT through your lens competition. It's still running till midnight this evening, so get your entries in. Thanks for riding with us.